I, I recommend everyone read it. It'll take you two hours to get through it. It's called The Book of Numbers by Aaron Clary. Women are going on dating apps for attention. Women are doing six on average, like 6,000 swipes to the left before they go on one date. Mm. 6,000 per one day. Now, obviously you're going to have a girl who's gone through some sort of like trauma or she's a nymphomaniac or she's been, you know, something's happened where she just like wants to fuck a different dude every day. We're talking like 3%, 1% of the population. So you're saying if a girl swipes on you, you're like one of a, of a lot of men well, that she so, actually swiped so, on and so, wants to talk to. So, so just the swipe, yeah. uh, at the top 60, the top 63, I'm sorry, the top 20% of men are getting 63% of the right swipes. The top 20% of, I'm sorry, top 10% of men are getting 63% of the right swipes. The top 20% of men are getting 83% of the right swipes, which means the bottom 80% of men are competing with 17% of women. Mm. 17%. Like, it's just, it's a disaster for men. It's so unequal. So the reality is, now, once she swipes, what's the likelihood of her going on a date with you? And then once she does that, what's the likelihood of her having sex with you? I have a friend of mine, he's one of my sales guys, and he's got six-pack abs, he's gorgeous, and he's like, yeah, I have, a, I have seven dates a week. I can have 14 dates a week. For guys that are that, in that category of, like, it's called the top 4.5%, there's a 4.5% of men that women actually pursue because of their physical attractiveness or whatever. There's 20% of men that women find attractive, and then there's 80% of men that women find unattractive. And so from that st standpoint, if you just base it on physical attractiveness, you're just not doing well. And what you'll find is on these dating apps, women are not actually going on there to date. They're going out there because they get validation and admiration and they get OnlyFans subscribers. That's why they're doing it. So Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge, you're going to find that there's a few guys that are getting all the dates and a ton of women that are going on one or two. Well, generally what happens whenever there's a new dating app that comes out, there's a few months where there's a bunch of girls that jump on it because they think it's different. They all get fucked by Brock the bartender who doesn't call them back. Mm -hmm. They all end up just having like, they all then think they found their boyfriend having meaningless sex with some fucking shortstop for the Padres who never calls them back again. And then afterwards they're like, fuck this dating app. And then they get off it. And by the time you get to the like two or three year period, it's just nothing but women with borderline personality disorder or have four kids. Mm. That's all that's left on those apps. It's just nothing but morbidly overweight women. Or if they're attractive, they're either prostitutes or girls trying to get you on OnlyFans. I think dating apps are <laughs> disastrous. I yeah. agree. And, and, and quite, quite frankly, I, I prefer organic. Instagram. I prefer Instagram's so, 10 times better. Instagram's it, yeah. for, for a guy that has an audience or, or a decent Instagram. Yeah. That is the way to do it. Yeah. And even when I go, when I meet girls out and about now, you know, like let's say I meet someone at the gym and I'll just, I, and it's very nonchalant. I never approach girls at the gym, but let's say I've been there a couple months. We both know of each other, you know, I'm working out next time. I might say, Hey, you know, my name's so-and-so. I just want to introduce myself. I see you around. Um, we'll chat a little bit and then I'll say, Hey, let's connect sometime. Are you on social? Yeah. Connect on Instagram. And then the best way to set it up is, Hey, we should grab a drink sometime. If you're open to it, w one of two things happen. They either say, Hey, no, I'm not interested. I have a boyfriend, whatever. Great. And it's nonchalant or two. They bet. Yeah, I'd love to. And then cool. You know, you're in the door and it's just such a better way to, yeah. to set up because now they get to check you out on Instagram. They get to yeah. check you out on social, um, versus going online and having to compete with all these thousands of guys that yeah. are swiping, you know? Uh, I, I would take it one step further. I would actually have all those girls collect them and then invite them to some massive event that you go to that you're in charge of and then let, let them all get to see you in uh, contextually like a, a position of power or high status. And doing that, then what happens is a, a bunch of the, let's just say, 20% uh, of the girls were going to say yes and 80% were not going to say no. If 100 of those girls then go to your event that you're running or that's for you, mm -hmm. all of a sudden that number comes to 40 or 50% of the women would say yes. Mm. Because they're because the thing is, like when women look at men, there's just attributes of, in, in a man they just don't know. Is this man going to sexual assault me? Is this man going to be terrible in bed? Is this man going to be cruel to me? Is he poor? Like There's all these things now, that Having a good know. social media presence with females and that sort of thing, that will help. That will that will shut a lot of that out. Yeah, so when you, set, when you show on your social media that women that there's compliance from other women on your social media that actually makes women far, feel far more comfortable around you now if you do it too much like me you'll have women come out and say yeah i don't like that you look like a yeah. fuck boy right before they sleep with you i, like, I dated a girl recently yeah. that because all the all the except for parker all the people on my team are female yeah and a lot of them are attractive yeah and i dated a girl recently who was very intimidated by it the reason i knew i didn't know while i was dating her but i knew after the fact was every time I invited her out to like a function with with my team members, yeah. she would always bail last minute. And it'd always be a different excuse. Oh, I don't feel good. Yeah. Whatever it is. And I found out after the fact that she was just a jealous woman. 
Yeah. So one of the things though is like like your attraction is still ten out of ten. Like she's still very attracted to you, even if she's considering it. If you just did a few things to like increase comfort, she would go out with you. This idea that women just like when when multiple women like a man, this idea that women are just like not attracted to them is total fucking cap. It is not true. It's something that women say to cope with the fact that they feel jealous or they're losing control. What you'll notice generally, and by the way, men are the same way. Uh, generally when a woman is, when you're doing something that can't garners you more control. So like you become better looking and get in better shape, get more followers on social media, get six pack abs, whatever. When you do those things, you're going to notice women become a little bit more complaint. They start to complain a little bit more. They start to try to pull, oh, let's stay at home and watch Netflix. Why are you hanging out with these people, et cetera, et cetera. When you do things that gain control, you're going to notice women have a problem with it. When you do things where you give up control, like the dad bod is one of the greatest examples mm. of this. Women saying they like the dad bod. The dad bod is utter and complete lunacy. This idea that women are attracted to men who are fat is stupidity. But what they do like is that the where dad bod comes from is when a woman gets pregnant, men also, when they're partnered with a woman will have increased prolactin levels and they'll put on weight and they look like Seth Rogen or Vince Vaughn or Elon Musk and you see them pasty and fat or whatever and women are, what's what's happening is women are like oh he's 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 not going to cheat on me because he's fat now and he's going to stick around so and it gives her their, comfort right so it gives her comfort so remember anytime she's gaining power she's going to say those are the things I like anytime she's losing power she's going to say that guy's an asshole he's a fuck boy that's always the way it is but again when we look at it if you were going to say which one would you rather have all the attraction cues and no no comfort cues. Those are the guys that women show up to your house in the middle of the night to have sex with you, even though another woman just walked out the door. Yeah. When it's all a comfort and nothing, no attraction, you're in the friend zone. Yeah. So that same woman though, that says that she prefers the guy that's with the dad bod because it's a level of comfort. Yeah. If she's going to go have a one night stand and she gets to pick whatever man she yeah, wants, she will she's not, not going to pick the guy, with the of dad course, bod, right? Of course. And, it, and it's just so crazy because like women will even say that that isn't true. And then they'll just do anonymous surveys and it's 100% true. It's just, the problem, the, the issue is, and obviously this is the discussion we're having, male nature is also, like, we're hyper competitive. We tend to cheat more than women. There's things we do. We're far more likely to commit domestic abuse than women are, right? We're far more likely to murder our partners than women are. We're far more likely to commit child abuse than women are. But, we, but we're also far more likely to take our own lives. When women, what, what a lot of times what the discussion is, whenever I have a discussion that is sort of points out the negative points of men, no one says anything about it. When I have a discussion, because it's like women actually like it. When I have a discussion that points out unflattering aspects of the female nature, then I'm a misogynist. And it's like, no, it's not. I'm not a misogynist. I'm just pointing out the truth. The fact that women will generally say one thing and then date a different guy. Do you understand how confusing it is? My friend, she lives in San so Diego. Confusing. My friend who lives in San Diego, uh, Elizabeth Egan, Ever or I'm sorry, Elizabeth Chevalier. She's a playmate. She lives in San Diego. Okay. I think she's living in Calabasas now with her boyfriend. But she comes on my show and she goes, I just want a guy who's nice. And he just acts like himself and he's just totally be himself. I was like, tell me about your ex-boyfriend. He was a narcissist. I'm like, do you, do you just, do you hear what you just said? Like you're saying these words and there's all these guys who are going to sit there and be nice to you. And none of them are going to have sex with you. But the narcissist had sex with you. Mm. Do you not hear yourself? And there's going to be women listening to this. and going to be like, that's cap. That's just because she's immature. You know, what's funny. Um, there was this thing uh, Jordan Peterson said incorrectly, by the way, where he's like, well, the reason why women are falling for these fuck boys is because they're not mature. Really? Go back and watch the Tinder Swindler documentary. Every one of those girls was over the age of 32. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. No. Love bombing still works for older women, too. Like these concepts still these alpha, like dark triad traits. They work for women that are older, younger. It's like that, that. I wouldn't have fallen for that. I see women all over the place falling for these dark triad traits. And I'll tell this and again. This is where women get really mad when I say this. If you wanted women could in one or two generations, if they chose to just absolutely all band together and say, we will have sex with no narcissist, no one with BPD, no one who uh, with histrionic and no one who is a sociopath. Absolutely. Under no circumstances will we have sex with any men who did that. Those proclivities would be breeded out of the population in like two generations. Mm. But women are exclusively fucking men like this. And that, that's the reason why these, uh, these genetic proclivities keep passing along. Women are attracted to men like this. If women don't like the way men are, then stop fucking them mm. for those things. And then they just go away. We as men like women who are fit and that have certain attributes of hip to waist ratio of facial symmetry and signs of youth. And because we keep having sex with women who look like that, then we have children who look like that. And then women continue to look that way. We keep breeding that into the population because that's what we want. Women on the other hand will complain about a man being a narcissist but she had sex with him that the population will then be will, will carry on the next generation five to eight percent of the population will be narcissists and then the women will complain about him
I'm like, well, then stop sleeping with those men. Stop sleeping with them. It, but that's the thing. They can't. They do because they because, again, men have a far greater understanding of what they're attracted to. Women do not. Women will literally say one thing and do another. And when you call it out to them, I had a woman sitting right there tell me she was a sapiosexual. She's a sapiosexual. I like guys who are really nerdy and smart. And I was like, your last two boyfriends, one of them was the guy, not one of the guys on, on Chippendales. He was the main dancer on Chippendales <laughs> that you filmed porn with and fucked him on Brazzers. And number two, your other boyfriend before that was the best looking VIP host in Las Vegas. And you're telling me you want a sapiosexual. Listen to yourself. You're saying what you want us to believe is true and you're dating male strippers. Mm. It's just so, oh, by the way, she sells real estate. She's done like no fucking, way. she's done like $10 million in deals, something like that. And she fucks on browsers on my life. I'll, I'll send you a, a fucking link. That's it's, crazy. It's madness, bro. And my point is like, when you say this, it's unflattering women. Will, and then I was like, okay, well then find evidence that what I'm saying isn't true. And they can't, they sit there and try to deny hypergamy. Of course you can't deny hypergamy. Women want things in men, attributes in men that are better than that are in those, in those women. So women want men that are taller than them. They want men that are smarter than them. They want men that are more, ed, uh, more educated that make more money that are more muscular and better, maybe not better looking, but like they want these attributes in these men that they want. And if they have to choose between two, they're going to choose the one that has more money or is taller or is funny or whatever. If, 